Graniola. This is the Graniola channel and I'd like to tell you a folk tale. Folk tales are simple stories that have been told and retold, passed down by word of mouth from generation to generation. They unify people. This story is named after a little bird that's called a honey guide. Often when you listen to a folk tale, you'll know where it comes from. At the end of this story, I'll tell you what part of the world it started in. On the very hottest day of one of the very hottest summers, a mother spoke to her two children. Because we have had a drought for so many days and the sun is so strong, there's no fruit left on our trees. Please go into the forest and bring back some wild apples for our supper. Her son, who was a big lazy hulk and had a disagreeable way of expressing himself, rolled his eyes, clicked his tongue, and said to his mother, it's much too hot to walk around searching for fruit. It won't be so hot because we'll be shaded by the trees, his much smaller sibling said. And then, turning to their mother, she added, We'll be happy to do as you ask. So the two set off, walking down the sandy path in search of something to eat. The boy was kicking the path with his head down. His sister was skipping along while whistling a cheerful tune. They reached the far side of the forest without finding anything edible. The drought had been just as devastating there as it had been to their own trees. The boy, who had now heard just about all he could stand of his sister's cheerful whistling, said in a nasty tone of voice, there's nothing in this place to pick, so we can just go back home. Used to her big brother's negativity, the little girl answered sweetly, we promised to bring something home for our mother. There's a village nearby and on the other side of it is another forest. I think we should try there. Absolutely no way. I'm hot and I'm sticky. You can try there while I rest here. And saying this, he sat down on a log and watched her continue down the path. It was only a short walk to the village. As she approached, she saw that it was deserted. There were no animals or people to be seen and the huts and the ground looked to be the same color because they were covered in a thick coat of red sand. As she was taking a shocked look around, she heard a faint voice that seemed as if it were calling for help. After a few moments, she realized that the sound was coming from a very large clay cooking pot. She knocked on it softly and timidly asked if there was someone inside. Yes, came the faint reply. Please help me to get out. The clay cooking pot was as big and tall as the small child, and it took every ounce of her strength to pull it up and to right it on the ground. When it had been moved, a wrinkled old man stood looking eye to eye with the girl. The young one was too polite to ask what had happened, but the man she had freed began talking excitedly. Wow, that was like being in an oven. I could hardly breathe in there. I was afraid I would never escape. It's been getting hotter and hotter in the village during the last month. We've had almost no rain and our fruit has been shriveling up on the tree branches. And then we heard that a fierce storm was coming our way. Everyone was in a panic and there was chaos all around. Men, women, and children grabbed their animals and whatever else they could and ran away. Somehow, with all of the hubbub and the sand pelting us and the wind pushing things over, 
that clay cooking pot landed right on top of me and I had no way to free myself. I am very, very grateful. If you had not moved the pot, I surely would have died inside of it. I must give you a gift. Oh, no, no, please. I'm just glad you're all right. Follow me, said the now very animated elder as he moved away so quickly that the girl could hardly keep up. In minutes, they had entered the forest in which he had been hoping to find fruit. Blocking the path was the largest tree she had ever seen. Its trunk was bigger around than the hut that her family lived in. The diminutive old man stopped jogging forward as quickly as he had started. In one swift movement, he swung an ax out toward the astonished girl and told her to chop a hole in its trunk. She didn't care to be rude, but couldn't stop herself from saying that it would take a giant to even make a dent in that tree. Don't overthink this. If you had stopped to consider, you never would have believed you were strong enough to move the cooking vessel that had me trapped. Realizing that this was true, the sweet girl lifted the axe and swung it into the tree trunk. She was amazed at the enormous gash that was made, but even more surprised at what happened next. Out of the hole that she had made stepped a goat, a sheep, and a chicken. The little man's eyes twinkled. These animals are for you to take home to show my gratitude. And before the sweet little girl could express her thanks, he had run off into the forest. The girl was naturally delighted and hurried off with the animals to share the good news with her brother. Despite acting impressed, her brother was not happy to hear the story of how she had saved a person who had rewarded her so richly. He was jealous. Even though he was raging inside, he pretended that he thought his sister's adventure story was the best one he had ever heard. With a smile, he suggested to her that they drink some cool, clean water before they started home. They could hear the sound of a river running below them from where they were standing on a high cliff. He suggested that they could tie vines around their waists and lower themselves down one after another to drink. Acting like a caring big brother, he offered that, as it might be dangerous, he would go down first. He wrapped the vine several times around his waist, gave the other end to his sister, and rappelled down into the gully. The water was cool, clean, and refreshing. He climbed back up using the vine, and then his sister started down. While she was drinking, the long stretch of vine that ended wrapped around her waist fell in a tangled up pile on the ground beside her. Startled and frightened, she called up to her brother that the vine had fallen. Oh no, he called down. Well, don't worry, I'll figure out something. As he finished saying this, he turned and started toward home with the three animals. When he got there, he told the whole story to his mother not omitting any detail, but changing the identity of the person who had saved the man and been gifted the animals to be himself rather than his sister. He also added that she had run home crying because she had not been given any gifts, and he thought that he would see her there by now. The mother knew her children well, and something about this story did not seem right. But she couldn't spare the time to think about it because it was getting dark and she was frantic to find her daughter. She was just trying to figure out where to start looking when she heard the twerping of a small bird. This bird is nicknamed the Honey Guide because 
If a person follows its flight, he will end up in front of a bee's nest where he can help himself to delicious honey. For some reason, the mother felt that she should follow the bird. She left her son behind with the animals and ran after the honey guide who led her straight to the spot on the cliff where her daughter had climbed down. The sweet girl was absolutely delighted when she saw her mother throwing down the vine. Her brother was not so happy when he first spotted her returning, but even he had a teeny tiny little bit of sweetness in him and he bowed his head and asked for forgiveness and promised to change his ways. And after that, all four of them lived together peacefully and happily. And by four, I mean sister, mother, brother, and honey guide. Because the honey guide always stayed close by and whenever they wanted, some took them to find sweet honey. This is a tale that is told in South Africa.